I wanted to express my... Uh, First, I wanted to express my sincerest thanks to Roy Friedman for this extremely professional presentation. And, uh, the is something very professional and very clear. Okay? On a very, very difficult topic. And thank God it made my life a lot easier. Because what I want to go over is exactly where he ended at. We have the ultimate contradiction of Jewish life. I mean, we are Jews and we'll always live in contradictions. But this is the ultimate paradox and contradiction of life. Why? Because we have Shmuel's calendar. And by the way, as you'll see in the Gemara, and I just want parenthetically to stop for a second, there is all the source material, all the Mekorals, including the slides, are available for download. Anybody who asks the show, or sends me an email, we'll get a link where you can download all the materials and I would encourage everybody to look at the source materials and the recorders inside. Because I think that this will reveal the depth and the greatness of the Torah. Because the, the Pasuk says, You should note that this astronomical calculations is what defines the Jewish people. And you'll see that for a very cursory, a very superficial view is just the opposite. It shows that we are completely out of sync. But, going back, as we saw, Shmuel is the only idea which is brought in the Gemara. As we saw, and you have in your handouts, that's the Gemara near, that involved, brings down, as Rabbi Friedman explained extremely well, a year, a year of 365 days in the quarter. Now we have Ravada. It's very interesting. Ravada calculates the solar year to be 365 days plus two, uh, dot, two, four, six, eight, two, two days. In other words, a very small difference between the two. Now, Rav Friedman said something amazing, and I would have to beg the opposite, and I'm going to show you how the opposite is true. He showed that Ravada, which we are going to analyze who Ravada was, happens to be that he, it's amazing, because if you calculate 19 intercalated years, which means 19 years of the Machzor Katan, which is 12 years or 12 months, of the lunar months, plus 7 years of 13 months of the lunar calendar, and you divide by 19, it comes out to exactly 365.246822. Wow, this is great. But perhaps Ravada is what's called the reverse engineered solar calendar. And we're going to see, is the solar calendar a solar calendar that is that way and it exactly matches our intercalated lunar calendar or just the opposite? The solar calendar of Ravada was derived from the intercalated 19 years. And therefore, for sure, come out of the same. Okay, but we have to understand something interesting. Now, as we saw in the movie, just to summarize, and that's what we're going to focus the first question. The solar year of Shmuel is larger than Ravanda by one hour and 485 halakim. The halakim are parts of an hour. Chazal don't have minutes or seconds. They have only the concept of halakim. Halakim means you divide an hour into 1,080 parts, which has a mystical meaning, and also that's how many breath a person breathes in an hour. So that's how Chazal understood. And they divided the hour in 1,080 parts. So the year, what's called the drift between Solar of Shmuel and Arvada, is by an hour and 485 parts. That is how Shmuel's solar year is larger than Arvada's. Now we could say, who cares? But Rabbi Friedman already showed the movie. Please let's go to the next slide. We are going to show that this is the paradox of Jewish life. I'm sorry, let's go back. The incompatibility. These two calendars are mutually exclusive. And this is the question that the one who this posed a great question in Jewish life from the beginning of this Birka Sahama story. Because 
Birka Sahama, as we saw in the movie greatly presented by Rabbi Friedman, according to Shmuel, falls magically every 28 years. Every 28 years you have the equinox at the beginning of when Tuesday night beginning of Wednesday. <laughs> according to Ravada Birka Sahama, I'll tell you I'm sorry, it will happen again, but not in our expectation of the world. It will happen in 689,472 <laughs> years, it will happen again. But to a Jew, this is, like my friend said, it won't happen. You need a lot of time. But, so, but why? Because Shmuel is a constant cycle. The years repeat themselves. According to Ravada, they are only constant. There is a constant to them. But they are constant to the moon, to the Lord. Because they are connected or reverse engineered from the moon. <laughs> As we'll soon see something very interesting according to the equinox, according to the Father. <coughs> but the leap years according to Shmuel. Our calendar, if according to Shmuel, we don't keep Pesach on the right time. Let me give you an example. This year, when is the equinox according to Shmuel? We make Birka Saham, Erev Pesach. We made it by a second. Because if it would have been any later, it means the Pesach will be in the winter, not in the spring. And the Torah says, Shomor is Chodesh Aviv. Anybody who's curious enough to look at next year, <laughs> next year, it's not a leap year according to Ravada. According to Shmuel, it would have to be a leap year. Because next year, Pesach falls on April 1st. Which means that Pesach, we are going to make Seder, on the winter, according to Ravada, according to Shmuel. And the problem is, this Ravada is called the elusive Ravada. Ravada doesn't appear anywhere. We're going to soon see what the question is. So how is the Aloha consistent? There is no consistency. If we make Birka Sahama, we don't keep Pesach. If we keep Pesach, and we believe that Pesach is on the right time like Ravada, our Birka Sahama is out of sync. Now you should know something. Anybody who looks at the Gemara in Brochus will see that Kimeke brings down the Oroch. The Oroch learns the Gemara different because the Gemara, if you remember how Rabbi Friedman presented, the Gemara is divided into parts. There is a Brisa from Tanoim that says, Aroye Chama Bitkufasa says, Oysemai Separations. Now the Brisa never explains what Chama Bitkufasa means. The one who explains that is Abaye. Abaye lived long after this Brisa. So the Oroch, who is a Rishon, learns the Brisa differently than Abaye. And he says, you know how Habit Kufosa means? You make Oisemai separations not in the equinox, or in the spring equinox every 28 years, but you make Bruchah Habit Kufosa when you see there is a rainy day like we had, a rainy three days, and the sun is out of sight for three days. When the sun comes back again, you make Oisemai separations. So everybody asks, the Oroch, that's a very nice shot in the Brisa, but how in the world can you argue with Abai? <laughs> so Sedech Sam Soifer, and it's on your handout in Simon Unvov, he says the Oroch had this problem. He says this Gemara is inconsistent, but the Bavli brings Shmuel. According to the Shmuel calendar, the shot in the Brisa is the sun every 28 years. However, according to Ravada, that is not true. So therefore the price must have a different shot. The only reason Abaye said what he said is because Abaye was passing like Shmuel. But doing it, we don't hold like Shmuel. I told you next year Pesach is a violation of the entire according to Shmuel. So therefore the Pshat Ligmar must be different. And the Shemar bring down, there is a Yerushalmi who says that. The one who brings this oral also is the Agois Mayans in the Rambam. But says some soifer, the problem is the Rambam. The Rambam passes like Ravada, he brings down, as you see in your handout. These two solar cycles are brought in halacha in the Rambam. The Rambam says we pass like this Ravada, he doesn't call Ravada, we will soon analyze who Ravada is. But he brings down Birka Sacham <laughs> So the question is, how does the Rambam hold? And says the Chsam soifer, even though this is a paradox in halacha, I saw Klal Yisrael always make Birka Sacham, and he says, I saw Rav Nosan Adler, HaKoyen, HaGodl, Mechav, I saw Rav Nosan Adler, Rav Nosan Adler made the Brocha. 
And since he made the bracha, must be somewhere a teretz. How does Shmuel and Ravada reconcile? And the rabbi himself brings both. So you've got to find a teretz. And he says, I don't even understand. The truth is, I don't understand. What does Dagoyis Mamis is saying? Dagoyis Mamis brings the oral, who argues clearly with uh, what you call with the rabbi. So the question is, how do we reconcile the two calendars? By the way, in your handout, you've seen historically, this has been a very interesting idea, and I just heard from Eretz Yisrael. Some people were so bothered by this, they decided, you know, so you can't make a broch on this, because we don't fast like Shmuel. So some people, they had the mina, and it's brought down, you see, there's some communities, I see Hungarian communities, that only the Shliach Tzibur makes the broch. Because for some reason, instead of having everybody make the broch, and have a problem with Rokhla, but I'll get one guy to do it. <laughs> in Eretz Yisrael, I just heard a new idea, because Eretz Yisrael manufactures humans all the time. They said you should say the Brocha of Brit of Hama by, by the, what you call, by the ocean. Because then, you know that if you don't see the ocean for 30 days, near Shalai, people don't see the ocean for 30 days, technically you should make a Brocha of Oyster My Sebracious. So be one of Shachli Yoytze, either for the ocean, or for the Brit Hama, Yoy Yoytze. <laughs> and therefore they have all this new humra, let's go to the yam, let's go to the beach, and to make it on the beach. The problem is you won't be back on time for the Muhammad's technical <laughs> issue. But this is the issue, but throughout history people were about how the world can they make this brocha. But the answer is, Kalal Yisrael always made the brocha. And if you see, Hashem today on the web, you have people throughout the generations made the brocha. And the question is how to reconcile these two calendars. And hopefully tonight, I'll try to give you an idea, an approach that we can reconcile and see the depth and the greatness of Chazal. That you'll see how this is developed. But let me explain to you something. Now, we have, and we have, Givaldi, if everyone gave us a good presentation, we saw two solar cycles. One is then called Shmuel, and one of them is Ravada. But the question is, there is an actual solar cycle out there. It's called the astronomical solar cycle. Because it's very easy to calculate. As my Friedman very well explained, the equinox, you don't need to be a genius, is the time when the whole Earth experiences an even day and night. So that is very clear. The equinox, you don't need to be a science. But neither one of the Jewish approaches is right. I'm sorry to tell you. We know, do we know when the spring starts, people? It's March 20th. So, our spring, so we have two shittas in Chazal, the Lechoira, this is Chochmaschem, Ubinaschem, Leneo Amin, the Lechoira, nothing is even close to the astronomical reality. Please, let's see the next uh, slide. Wait, wait, to the slides. I, I'm sorry, I don't have a movie. After such a movie, the slides are so poor looking. You know, what can I do? <laughs> but you know, we have to thank Jamie Schechter, who will help me with the slides, because even those slides I couldn't do. So <laughs> this is like something to be thought. This is an interesting analysis. Although the Birka Saham, I told you, the Tkufa, the equinox, never comes back again on Wednesday night, at the beginning of that, where my Freeman will explain, only once every 685,000 years, but there is a cyclicality to it. The Tkufa, the equinox, according to Ravada, is always consistent from the Moilad. In other words, if you know the Moilad, to Shmuel, you not know when the, because the two are independent. There is an independence between the solar cycle and the lunar cycle. If somebody, if you go to show and somebody announces Moilad Nisan, like you do in, the, in Yiddish and in English, whatever language, and you want to calculate the equinox, according to Shmuel, you have no clue because it's completely random. However, according to Ravada, if you have this graph and you download, you know where the Kufa is. Because the Tkufa is consistent, the solar cycle, the solar equinox, is a function of the lunar calendar. According to my view, it's what's called a reverse engineer calendar. We created a solar calendar based upon the reverse engineering of the lunar calendar, and therefore it's always consistent. And you could see, always, this is Ravada's Kufa Nisan, the spring equinox, and its distance to the Moilat Nisan. And every of the 19 years you have here the sites, you could draw, and it's very fascinating. It's consistent. <coughs> and it repeats every time. Always in the first year of the cycle, as you'll see something amazing, but you'll see that the Moilad, the sun, the Tkufa, the, I'm sorry, the 
spring equinox precedes the Moilad in the first year of the 19 by exactly 19 hours and a few halokim called Zapatrad, and that's here. So you have exactly, just watch, very interesting. Nine hours and some halokim and etc. Now let's take a look at the big issue. Please let's go to the next slide. Now the next slide will show, this is the, the, our paradox to astronomical reality. This is compared to Solex, to a, I was able to get to a professor at, in Canada, that you could see the integrated Moiler, the integrated solar <laughs> cycles used by NASA. NASA calculates this very precisely to the past and to the future, during the present it's very easy to see. You just calculate the time when it's 12 hours everywhere in the world, the Earth is equidistant. But you could integrate and see how it was, how it is. And if you look at it carefully, in the time of Shmuel, clearly, it was not already. When Shmuel came up with his calculation, he was already off. He was already off by two and a half days. So when Shmuel said, okay, I'm announcing the Gemara publicizes Shmuel's vernal, the spring equinox, the vernal equinox. Everybody's expecting it and they realize it doesn't match anymore. Because if you are really precise in the day and the night, you realize that the equinox was two and a half days before. So even in his time, he was already late. So we say to him, How is that possible? You're going to tell me that the day he announced it is already off. <laughs> now, I'll tell you something. This created a huge controversy in Claudio. There is a sefer called Itim Lebina. The Itim Lebina was a sefer written in the 18th century. It's a great sefer. Chazonish writes the person of the Chavur of Ziresh, Edel King. His name from again is called Gitzburg. And he brings down the Maorenaim and he says, you know something, Shmuel was relying on old archaic astronomy. Because the pre Ptolemaic astronomy, the astronomy before the Julian, because our calendar called the Julian is called the Gregorian calendar. Our calendar before the Gregorian calendar in the 16th century was called the Julian calendar by Julius Caesar. And it was exactly like Shmuel, 365 days and a quarter. But by the 16th century, it was so much off that they had to readjust. But Julian calendar was assuming an astronomy that existed in the beginning of the common era. And then, when it was done, was exactly right. Happened to be that the Vernal Equinox, according to them, was right. You see the line that goes to zero. This line, well, you see here is the zero difference. At that point in time, Shmuel was right. So when the astronomers came up with this, in the beginning of the common era, it was right. So therefore, that was the acceptable astronomy. Astronomy at that time was done by observation, it was right. The issue is by the time of Shmuel, Shmuel lived 350 years later, uh, over 300 years later, this is from the first century before the common era, to Shmuel, which is the third century of the common era, 300 years. He says maybe 250 years, it was already off by two days. What does that mean? How does Shmuel reconcile to reality? That's question number one. Shmuel says in the Gemara and Brochus, For me, it's clear the paths of heaven as the path of my own house in the Hardo. And you're telling me that when Shmuel was alive, his own calculations made no sense. And the Maradim says, yes, he relied on old archaic astronomy. So the Chazanish writes, and I'll grant it's very poor the Chazanish. I think this Chazanish is very informative and formative. Says the Chazanish on this Itim Lebina. And you have it. And he says, to the cost of Itim Lebina, the Shmuel Akach Shita Yeshana Shla Tochnim, these are the lies that the Yetzir loves. Okay, it's all a function and a derivative of the Yetzir of the Zora. Although the Mechaber was a Yerushalayim, but the Shoga, the Chosh of Shemut, the Lemakan, he made a mistake. He thought that you could say this on Shmuel. The Avar is a minus Beshoigek, and he's a min Beshoigek. He's an Apikoyeret Beshoigek. <laughs> Very strong language. The question is, how are you doing Shmuel? <laughs> now, you're going to see something fascinating. Now, Ravada comes. Ravada is elusive. This second idea 
which is this new Moilad, which in my view is what's called the reverse engineered Moilad, a uh, reverse engineered solar cycle, which is a solar cycle as a function of the lunar, which is the 365 shorter by than Shmuel. It's a problem also. Who is this Ravada? Where did he live? Did he ever exist a Ravada? Mm -hmm. We don't have in all the Talmud. So the only issue is that if you look at the Gemara Roshona, which is in your handout, the Gemara says, the Sholach Le Ravuna Barav in the Roven. Ravuna Barav said the message to Robin. He said that if you see that the Kufa, if you see that the spring equinox falls after the first day of Pesach, be me Abar the Shona. And since that our kennel doesn't do that, our calendar, as I told you, next year, we don't do that. Must be there is somebody else. There is an absent, a missing person. Must be there was some Ravada out there. The question is, when did he come up, this Ravada? So the Idim Libin Alishi Tosa says like this. You know something? If Ravada lived at the time of Shmuel, that is a bigger problem, you know why? Because Ravada was even less accurate than Shmuel. <coughs> because although Shmuel, as I told you, was two and a half days late in the third century, Ravada was two and a half days too early. Hmm. So in other words, these Jews look funny. The, all of them, a few of them are late, a few of them are early. So who is this Ravada? So the Itim Levina, as for some reason, the Itim Levina has these things, they are mind, but he loves creating history. He reverse engineers history. So he says like this. You should know something, that this Ravada really was the time of the Gionim. Lily lived not in the third century of the common era, but in the 10th or 11th century of the common era. And he saw the Shmuel was getting away of the thing, so he decided to create his own calendar, and that's the calendar we rely on. The problem is, and somebody just said it from England, I've been like, oh, so many people are not interested in this topic, so this is the reason I'm interested. If you look in the Arabic sources, okay, Al Birini, from the 7th century, in the 8th century already, the Arab astronomer says the Jews have two calendars, solar calendars. They don't call it the Shmuel. But they said there is a longer solar calendar and a shorter solar calendar. So you see, Ravada already existed at that point. So you can't say that Ravada lived in the 11th century to try to get this thing a little closer to reality, because the Arabs already said the Jews had two calendars. The Rambam, we know, lived in 1135. He had already. But if this is 8th century and perhaps 7th century, the, news, the Jews already had that. And if you look at it, the Rishonim, and the first one that says the Firish, the Meforish on the Rambam says, there is, I saw a Brysa that brings this Rairu Siv Ravada. And Ravada was brought and exists even though Talmud Bavli doesn't mention it. So is this Ravada is an ancient source. So everybody's bothered, why doesn't the Bavli mention it? So says the Meforish, because there were two calendars. There was a public calendar and the secret calendar. Shmuel is the public version of the calendar, and Ravada is the secret version of the calendar. So when the calendars are being calculated, the people who calculated the calculation of the calendar is called Sod Haibur, it's called the secret <coughs> calendar, and therefore it was not publicized. And then everybody goes on and says, one second, why in the world is Ravada more secret? And says in the Beforesh, and he brings down that the, the truth is already, is brought already the Shabbat Rishonim, the Shabbat Sefer Ayyid Reunus of the first Rishonim. And by the way, you have a new copy that says, he brings us a Bishop and a Boruch, that he lived in the, like in the beginning of the 13th century. And he says, because if people would find out the Vadas, they would be able to do witchcraft. They would be able to seize upon that to do witchcraft. <coughs> what does that mean? So everybody says, one second, Shmuel is in the Gemara, away from, from like actual reality. Ravada is a little shorter, it's a little closer to the astronomical year, and people, it was a secret in our calendar. So what does that mean? How does that fit with astronomical reality? What does that mean that only secret on the public? That's the question that everybody asks. And they say, I'm telling you, I've seen people have to, to answer this, people will say that Shmuel really is not the Shmuel that we know. This is a Shmuel that lived in Bayeshini. Because to say, because I told you, this calendar is only true in the first century of, before the se first century BC. So this guy, this professor in Canada says, this Shmuel is a Shmuel that lived much earlier. And this Ravada lived much later. 
like I love it, like adding people and creating history. But Chas Hashem, that's not the case. So what does it mean? How does it get close to astronomical reality, both Shmuel and Levada? So that's the second question that we we'll try to answer. Okay? And I thought that Ravada is not a solar calendar. It's a solar calendar reverse engineered from the lunar calendar. And the third question the movie brings down. The Gemara says, and that's how we show in Pascal, the world was created when? In Tishrei. But for Tkufa, for this season, for Birka Zahama, we use Nisan. And the question is, how in the world can you use Nisan? We think that Hashem created the world in Nisan? So the question that everybody asks on the Gemara, but we show him all Paskin, the Rambam, if you look at the Rambam and the other Chazoka, if you look at the Ramban, everybody else, they Paskin, the world was created in Tishrei. Hayom Harasoyim, like the Gemara, Posha says. And the Tkufa is in Nisan. So I can make the Brochim Nisan. So the God, the Ran already asked the question, and the Ran says, you know why you use Nisan? Because that's the time when every, all the flowers and everything is springing forth. It's a beautiful day. And then we use this Nisan. Toys says the question. Toys says the question, absolutely. But <laughs> yeah, but we don't pass like that. Because I told you, Robert is showing him, don't pass like that. The reason Toys is 100% right. But as I mentioned, look at it, the Rambam passes not like that. The Ramban in Hobbish passes not like that. And several of the other is showing him. So the Ram answers it because that's a nicer day. And it says an amazing thing. The grow in Shukhan The grow. I'm going to explain to you, hopefully, how the grow in Nivon explains in Shulchan Aruch, in Yonagroim, in the beginning of Yilchois Rosh Hashanah. And I think that that is a fundamental Yonagroim. But the Goyen says, you know why? Because only if you go to Nisan, if you remember the movie, that's the only time in the Jewish calendar that the spring equinox falls on a Wednesday night at zero hours. And we, for some reason, have this idea that it has to be zero hours on Wednesday night, only falls in Nisan, that's what they brought what does that mean? <laughs> so, to summarize the three questions I'd like to address. How is our calendar compatible? How is the calendar ever fit with astronomical reality? Something that we pride ourselves at the Koyach of Jews. And how can we make the Baruch HaSacham a Nisan on the world's created Tishrei? To answer all of this, I'll add you one more problem, and I think that's extremely important. Please, let's go see. And this, the gross says, everybody agrees. Now, this is just interesting. If you look at it, Kufas Nisan to Ravada is Nisan, the second day of Nisan. Or Kufas Nisan, according to Ravada, just came out on Friday. So you realize how far away. And the other one is in Nabi. But the, the, what you call the vernal, the spring equinox, is on March 20th. So Shmuel is late. So we have March 20th, the Gregorian calendar. We have Ravada on the second day of Nisan. And you have Shmuel, April 8th, coming back on the 14th of Nisan. Okay, next uh, slide, please. Go back to the slide. Toys is Rosh This Toys is extremely important to know. What is Birka Sahama? The simple idea is, like my Friedman says, on Wednesday night, God took the sun and put it in the firmament. The Yom Revi, the mirrors are created. Rabbi said, that's not the truth, I'm sorry to say, but the Rishonim. And the Gros says, you can't argue with them, I'm going to show you, because the Shtoysa says, and the Norishon can never argue with this. Let's say the world was created in Tishrei, like we passed him. When was the Moilad in Tishrei? You realize all the Moilads and all the Kufas, they are connecting, you could reverse engineer, you could take this calculation, and find out every Moilad what it was, and every spring equinox what it was. Very easy to calculate. So when was the first Moilad of Israel? <laughs> When Adam Arishon was created, it was created on a Friday. So the Moila Nisan was a Friday, was a Friday at the end of the 14th hour. Al Pi Aloha, that's what it is. Tishrei had also, at that year that Adam was created, there was the equinox. That was the winter equinox, the beginning of the fall. That was on a Wednesday, but not at zero hours. That was a Wednesday at 15 hours. Sesto is something amazing. Now, the world was created then, but we look back six months earlier. Let's have look back six months earlier before Bria Soil. If you look back six months earlier, the Nisan, the Moilad of Nisan, it's called the Moilad Nisan of Tohu. In the world of Tohu, 
That Mona Nissan was on a Wednesday at 9 hours and 642 halokin. That equinox, which is called the equinox de Tohu, the equinox pre Bria Soilo, that equinox, the spring equinox, according to Ravada, was a Wednesday at zero hours. Okay? It preceded the Moila by nine hours and 642 halokin. And therefore, every year of the first year of the 19th, the Moila to precede, the, the spring equinox to precede the Moila by nine hours and 642 halokin. Shmuel, you know when it was? It was seven days earlier. So it not only that, not only was on that Wednesday, was on the 23rd of Adar, Wednesday at zero hours. Our Birka Sahama is a Wednesday at zero hours commemorating that Molad that was pre Bria Soilo. According to Toysus, according to Rebbe Lezer, the world was created in Tishrei. This Molad was actually six months and one week before Bria Soilo. According to Rebbe Shua, that the world was created in Nisan, this Spring equinox was a week earlier. So neither according to Rabbi Yeshua or Rabbi Lezer, this has anything to do with the creation of the world. It's pre Bria Soilon. By the way, this is Halacha in the Rambam, because the Rambam says this is very important to pass in Halacha, because this are what's called the primordial moila and the primordial tukov. <laughs> the real first moila that we account for is the moila not six months prior, but 12 months prior. <laughs> Is the Moilad of Tishri de Tohu, which was the Moilad Baharad. It was on a Monday, five hours and 204 halaki before Bria Soilam. So the primordial Moilad was the Tishri of Tohu, which was either a year or six months before Bria Soilam. And the Tkufa is our Tkufa, according to Shmuel, it's seven days before Bria Soilam. According to Rabbi Shmuel, to Rabbi Shmuel, contra Beleza, we passed in six months and a week beforehand. What does that all mean? How can you have a moilad? We just saw an astronomical presentation. And everything is based upon the existence of the sun, the moon, the stars, the firmament. And this is all before Bria Soil. I just told you that Kufa, the primordial moilad, and the primordial Kufa are pre Bria Soil. And that doesn't matter, according to Rebbe Lezer, this is a year before, according to Rabbi Yeshua, this is six months prior, the first Moilad. The first Kufa, the first equinox, was either six months prior or a week prior. How do you make all of this? To answer all of this, I think that we have to understand, and I think the essence of Birka Sahama. And Rabbi said, you see how everything fits, and that's why the Torah says, this is Chochmaschem Binaschem Neneyohami. We are talking about, when we talk about the sun and the moon, we are talking about not the physical manifestation of them, which for sure is a manifestation of the physical, it reflects the spiritual, but we're talking about the mystical foundational myth of those sun and the moon. They came, Chazonish writes, and I'll tell you, I'm going to write how the Chazonish writes, you could explain it a little differently. The sun comes with a history, with his foundational history. So when he came in, he didn't come like a car, when you get a car from the dealer. The car doesn't come zero, it comes with a few miles before. The world was created with a history, it came with a pedigree. The pedigree of the moon and the sun tells you the mystical and the mythical foundation of those things that you see here. And this is what we're commemorating. All Birka Saham is that primordial moment. Now that primordial moment you should see something amazing and very, very important. The cycle of 28 in Chazal is the perfect cycle of creation. As we spoke in the Shior, Chazal, according to the Mekubalim, believed that the world was created, with a, was supposed to be created with a 28 hour day, not a seven day. The Apostle says, Kishay Shesiyom Imos Hashem, Hashem means six days. So Sheish Yomim, the Rashmari asks, it should have been Beshish, Hashem created the world in six days. Why does it say six days? <laughs> because the world originally was supposed to be six days of 28 hours each. And the world, for some reason, 
each day they couldn't get a king among themselves, so each one contributed four hours to create Shabbos. So they turned a six-day six week of 28 hours into a seven-day week of 24 hours. What does that mean? But I said, let me explain to you something which is so foundational in Jewish thought. The cycle of 28 is not by cycle. If you look and you have a copy, in Kohelas, the ace, ace, lyrkoid, the ace, you know, the different seasons. The apostle describes 28 of them. Not only that, we just saw by Freeman says something Givaldic. The cycle of 28 disappeared because the moon now is dictating. But you know something? It says in the Megala Mukas, the moon has a 28, that cycle of 28 of the sun remains on a daily basis in the moon. Because how long is the moon, the lunar calendar? 29 days is a month. But the Gemara says 24 hours, the moon is not visible. It doesn't shun the sunlight. How many full days does the moon shine the solar light for 28 days? So those 28 remain as the cycle of life. 28 is the primordial cycle for very simple. Chazal understand that in this world there are six meters, there are six dimensions, which are the physical dimensions, and there is the seventh, which is Malchus Shemayim. We know that the Torah repeats in itself the seventh is always there, which is Malchus Shemayim. The six are the six sense, the six sides. We have the four sides plus the up and the down, the six dimensions, and you have the seventh, which is the inner dimension. As I always mention, and people probably heard it already so many times, when you do the Nanuim, how many Nanuim we do? We do six Nanuim. But every single possible that we say the Nanuim on is not divisible by sex. Hodu Hashem Kitov Kilam Chazod is seven words. Anna Hashem Hoshiana, the four words. So Chazal came out with it, Mimisho says a very nice answer. We ignore the name of Hashem, and this way is divisible by sex. Hold Hashem Kitov, you take the seven and you subtract the name of Hashem, you have a six, you do six Nanuim. And the Shem Hashem, you don't say, they don't, they don't shock. An Hashem Hoshiana, the four words, you take away the name of Hashem, you have three words, two Nanuim each word, divides the divisible. And I was told to myself, it doesn't make any sense. You're going to tell me what? You couldn't find six word psukim? We had to find these old Jewish patterns and all just kind of Jewish ideas of how to fit it in? How to fit in a square circle in a round peg or whatever? The idea is very simple, Rabbi Isai, because there are seven dimensions. One dimension is spiritual, it's everywhere, it's Malchus Shomayim. And you can't point, because it's everywhere. So there are six physical dimensions, but there are really seven dimensions, is Malchus Shomayim. Malchus Shomayim, the seventh dimension, was supposed to be self-evident from the universe. It was supposed to be clear that you saw what the universe was all about. The seventh was part of it. However, there was a primordial moment, which is called Kitru Galavona. Hashem created the sun, which is the giver of light, and the moon, which receives it and reflects it back. That's why in the movie, that's what the moon does. It receives the light, shines it back. And Chazal portrayed that the foundational myth of that sun and that moon, there was a controversy between the two. We can't share power. That fight between the sun and the moon created the break that the receiver and the giver were put into a situation that they were Kibayochel seen to be the same. This moon receiver says, and no, I'm not receiving from the sun and completely being bottled to him. I just can't share with him. I have to have my own independence. He created an image of independence. When the sun and the moon split themselves, it created the split of the Bria that created the possibility of Chet. When the concept that the world is a receiver is not self-evident anymore. Chazal say that the cycle of 28 is 7 times 4. 4, as we know, is the cognitive world that we have. So it was supposed to be 28. It was supposed to be self-evident. They said, we can't. And Hashem created a split that now the seventh is a side separated from the six. So the cycle of 28 breaks. This is the Kitru Galavona. Chazal said the following, Kitru Galavona caused 
the next step of it was that the fruit and the, and the tree didn't taste the same. We know that the concept Hashem wanted that the tree and the fruit should taste the same. The idea is because the tree is a vehicle, is a way to achieve the fruit. The concept was the tree wanted its own independence. So it's not like I'm going to be part of this, uh, what you call this fruit. I want to be the vessel, the intermediary, it wanted to create its own identity. And therefore, it broke from the, from the fruit. The sun and the moon break. This breaks and that creates the ultimate chet, which is called chet etzadas. This is the story of our universe. The Maral says this is the defect of creation. Hashem created a world of defect. That the number seven, which is the recognition of the master and the giver, is separated from the world. And the number seven has to be reincorporated by us to the world. That's why I said that Shabbos always has to be mentioned during the week. It's not only important to keep Shabbos, it's important to keep Shabbos and to reincorporate, make it part of the whole week. This, in Chazal, says the following. And that you should see the growth. Very important. What was the punishment of the Levona? Chazal said, Hashem made the Levona smaller. What does it mean it made it smaller? Do not ever think that the Kabbalah will say that the Levana ever gave its own light. It never shone its own light. It always was a reflector of the sun's light. But the cycle was supposed to be perfect. But the mute Levana is that its cycle became smaller and it shrunk. And therefore the lunar calendar is lower and smaller than the solar calendar by how many days? by almost 11 days. In Chazal, you'll see the number 11 represents evilness in this world. It represents a void Zora. What an Echad Esrem When we say 11, who knows 11? 11 are the stars. Because the stars are the concept of that the stars bow down to Yosef. It's the concept of a void Zora. Always 11 represents the number which is the curse. How many curses are there in the Torah? There are 11 curses. The Ktoris, which comes to be Mechaper on death, how many Samimonim it has? It has 11. These 11 represents Kibiyoho, that there is the 10, which is the totality of creation, and there's something outside of it. He separated the giver and the taker, and that created Avoid the Zora. Avoid the Zora is torso with 11. Stay in the Gro, you'll see in the Gro here, Aseres Emechuva that expands into 11 days, because there's Tosef and Yom Kippurim, are coming to be Mechaper those 11 days that the Levona created, the dissection, the dichotomy between her and the sun. This is the 11. This is the break of the 11. You should be starting to Chazal Sefik Givadik. I just told you the marriage. The cycle of 28 is the cycle of totality of recognition. What was the tikkun of those cycles of 28? Stating choices, you'll see something very funny. According to Shua, how many days it preceded its Tkufa to Tkufa Zaravada, that foundational equinox? How many days it preceded? Seven days. Says choices, those are the seven days that the Levona Noag Nizuf Batsma. When she was, when she complained, she realized that she just caused a massive destruction. So she gave of herself seven days that the sun should precede her. Those are the seven days that Shmuel says that the equinox preceded her at the time of creation. Says Toys is something unbelievable. The Bali Achesman says that you take Shmuel's own cycles, you have to subtract back those seven days. Because those seven days, it's not real seven days, are seven days that the sun, the Levona, gave to the What's the seven days of Avoy Shabbos? Because that recognition that there is a giver, that we are not independent, is the recognition of Shabbos. That Shabbos is the Eidos of the world. What Chazal say the day of 28 turned into a day of 24 by creating Shabbos. And this is all pre Briya This is our foundational myth. If you look at the sun and the moon, that's their history that we proclaim. So the sun was supposed to be the world was supposed to be a cycle of 28. The moon created the Kitru, it separated it. That now the 28 can only be achieved by taking the Sabbath and reincorporating it to the Bria. 
which is all avoid us all. And you see that the calendars are going to reflect it. And what has created? The Kidru Galevona broke the 28, and he created the cycle of 11 days, which represent the evil of this world. Now I'm going to show you something really amazing. And you'll see something how the calendars are such. Our calendar, the calendar of Shmuel, is a calendar which was before Hesia because this was a calendar that represented a mystical theory. It was never real. I told you when he did it, it didn't represent reality. The calendar of the sun, in its total perfect form, was cyclical of 28 years. And those cycles were perfect, and those cycles were be true had the Kitru Galibana not take place. That is the larger cycle of the sun. The Kitru Galevona made that cycle impossible. Says Rapsodek, even though there was a break between the Ham and the Levona, we as humans can bring it together. And that's the concept of the intercalation of the years, which the solar year, the lunar year, are put together by our actions. Ravada is what's called the small tikkun. And the astronomical one is the world in its own reality. The idea is very simple. The world as it was supposed to be was supposed to be 28 cycle years, which represent the perfection. The A scene, by the way, if you know, Chazal always say that the 28 are not just by chance. If you take Yud Kei Vovke, the Shem Shemayim, and you break down in three dimensions, you take Yud Kei Vovke, and you break, break it down in spelling Yud as Yud Vov Dalet, He is He Aleph, Vov is Vov Aleph Vov. You break it down and you break a third time, you'll come to 28 letters. This is the totality of Giru Shemayim. This was supposed to be by the sun. The sun did not achieve that. Our broth of voice and my separations is when we look at the sun, we realize that the sun should have been completing a cycle, and this would have been the vernal equinox. The reason why it's not is because of Kitra Galavona. The first tikkun to try to bring the, to reconcile the sun and the levana is Tkufa de Ravada. Tkufa de Ravada is the small tikkun. You know what it does, the small tikkun? It takes one simple idea. It takes it and it gives seven days. It takes seven days away from the sun. And you realize it made the world seven days shorter in its beginning. <coughs> because it created Chavez. And you know when it gives back the seven days? At the end of creation. You know by how many days, according to NASA, Tkufa de Ravada will be larger than the astronomical solar cycle? Seven days. So the seven days that Chazal take, they told you that she took it from the calendar of Shmuel are given back. She made the sun by creating a solar calendar based upon the moon reflecting the sun's light. We created a solar cycle that's a made up cycle. Because this, our void that we make up a reality. And that reality gives the sun seven days extra. And this is counted not at the beginning of the creation like Shmuel, but the end of creation. You have seven days. Let's see the next. Let's see the next. Not uh, before. Before. Let's go back. Yeah, one more. You realize here, very interesting, in the year 6,000, March 20th is astronomical, and Ravada is the 5th of Nisan. If you count, it's seven days. <coughs> because the seven days are given back by the moon, by the creation of Shabbos. So what the Bria, Kufa de Shmuel is what's called the perfect Kufa. And that's the spiritual that we cannot experience. We created a synthetic one. Our calendar is based on Ravada. Because Ravada reconciles the sun and the moon together. They are Mishtam Shimbekeser Echot. And that's why the solar calendar is derived out of the lunar calendar. And it gives extra days to the sun by seven days. That's why if you look at the astronomical sun, the sun is independent and people turn the sun into Vedas aura. The sun was supposed to be the biggest evidence of a control. What's missing is missing the recognition. The recognition is the number seven, which is the Shabbos. Ravada created the synthetic calendar, which all our halachas are based, to bring a tikkun to it, to give seven extra days to it. And you'll see something, Chazal, to the end of creation, there are seven days given back to the sun. And those are the seven days that we turn the sun, that we give back the crown to the sun. But you know something else amazing? 
This is called the smalting, because it's not natural, it's created, it's manufactured. We create Shabbos, we recognize. In life, we gave back and we turned this moon subservient to the sun by adding seven days, which is Shabbos in the condition of number seven. That's why our mitzvahs, Rabbi Yisrael, if you look at it, are always based on the number seven. All the mitzvahs are based on number seven. We are focused on the number seven. But this was kept in secret. You know why? Because the Kufa de Ravada, by Adam Shabbos, you still do not solve the problem. Because what's the ultimate full cycle of the moon should have been? The, of the sun, I'm sorry. It should have been how many days? 28 years. It should have been 365 and a quarter days. The cycle of 28. You know by how, what's the difference between the two? How many days is Kufa de Shmua larger than Kufa de Ravada? So let's see the next two slides, please. Chazal say, and this is brought everywhere, the Chazal wanted to make sure that Kufa de Ravada exceeds, no sorry, Kufa de Shmuel exceeds Ravada by no more than 11 days until the end of creation. So Kufa de Shmuel is larger than Kufa de Ravada, even after Ravada adds 7 days, by how many? By 11 days. And that's to the end of creation. Says the Chazonish, when we go ahead and we take Tkufa de Ravada, Tkufa de Shmuel. So what's Tkufa de Shmuel? Tkufa de Shmuel, you realize something. There is a difference, as Rabbi Friedman explained, between the solar, between Tkufa de Shmuel, the calendar of Shmuel, and the calendar of Ravada. There's a difference every year of an hour and for 885 Tolkien. If you multiply this by the time of cycles until the end of creation, you'll come up to 11 days and 16 hours. After subtracting a magical seven days and nine hours, which is the seven days, I told you because the seven days the Travada pays in the end. So after you subtract that, it's only 11. Says the Yesodoilam and says the Chazonish, this mag magical seven days allow that Kufa de Shmuel is larger than Kufa de Ravada by only 11 days. And you know what the answer, what this explanation for this is? As much as we, as humans, brought the recognition of Hashem, <coughs> that recognition is not perfect. It's called a micro-recognition. But on the macro sense, evil still exists in the world. That evilness that exists in the world is still here. And it's the existing of the number 11. And those are the 11 days that Shmuel is greater than Ravada. Tkufa de Ravada, after everything is said and done, is that after we add 11 days and we create the intercalation, there are 11 days in creation that will never be Mesukan until Mashiach comes. Tkufa de Ravada will reach Tkufa de Shmuel when Mashiach comes because those are the 11 days which will be fixed. Look at something Givaldic in Chazal. Do you ever see the Kodesh HaKadoshim? The Kodesh HaKadoshim is built, but behind the Kodesh HaKadoshim there is a space of 11 hours. It's fascinating. Why the, behind the Kodesh HaKadoshim there is 11 Amis? But the answer is very simple. Because the Tikkun of this world that's possible through our actions still leaves evil behind. As long as we live in this world, 11 Amis are still behind. The 11 is still intact. We have fixed as much as we could, but we left in the Bria the number 11. You know what the Chidush, the Malbim says of the third base of Igdash will be? that the Kodesh HaKadosh will extend to the back and will be no 11 arms behind. So the Chidosh of the Kodesh HaKadosh in the third base of Igdash and that will be no 11 arms behind. Because that's the Tikkun, when the world comes to Tikkunoi, is that Kufa de Shmuel will be imperative. Shtet Nechazonish, Kufa de Shmuel is the only real Kufa. Everything else has time gets in between. The astronomical sun that we see, is the fallacy of reality that leads the world to a false existence. Tkufa de Ravada is our human attempt to reconcile the two by creating the number seven, but it's only a micro tikkun that in the end still leaves 11 days behind. As much as we may suck on the micro level, the macro level still stinks. And Tkufa de Shmuel is Biyas HaMashiach. State in Chazal. And that's, by the way, in the Aloha and Beis Yosef. When you say, O many hei shmei rabba, O many hei shmei rabba, the name of Hashem should be great. There are 28 letters. That's why Mishabura says that the word shmei should be spelled without a yud. 
That's the only time that you have to remember how it's spelled. Because if you spell with a U, it's 29, and it should be 28. Shtetin beisoyse, if you bring Zadim and Eras Amor, that you should be mechaven, the possible gracious bore loikim as a shomayim vesoretz, is also seven words with 28 letters. And the posse right before Matan Torah, Vedabu, the Kim is called for in the Lemo, and it's also seven words and twenty letters. On the Sea Shmerab, I should think about the posse of Rashis and the posse of Matan Torah. What does that mean? Rabbi said, Yehei Shmerab. When we say we want the Shem Hashem to be Rav, you know what we're asking for? That evil should cease to exist. Kyoshim Tichle. This is the cycle of 28. The Malchus Shomayim doesn't have to be added back. It's self-evident that the world is a cycle of 28. And we say Yesh Meirah, but we have to remember what it was supposed to be in the primordial creation of Gracious Baralogim, and as Martin Torah was supposed to be, and it never did because of error. Our Bakosha is to bring back the world to the world of 28. So the 11, which is the remnant of the calendar, will disappear. Rabbi say, look at the Gemara, and I brought Yoel. Yoel, the Gemara says like this, the Gemara says by Yoel, if you look at Sefer and Yoel, Yoel talks about the destruction of the Yetzirah. What with the destruction of the Yetzirah, says Yoel? Yoel says, that according to the Gemara, that they planted seeds in the beginning of Pesach, and this tour that was supposed to grow in six months will grow in 11 days. So what is the Tikkun? And this is the Satsfoy Niarchik Minoret. Yoel says, I will destroy the Yetzirah. How would they destroy this? Well, the Gemara says because they planted <coughs> seeds and the, the stua grew in 11 days and it was fully blossomed in 11 days. What does it have to do with the, the Yetzirah being destroyed? But I've always said that's what it is. The Yetzirah being destroyed is when the number 11 ceases to exist. The concept is very simple. Let's go to the last uh, slide. If you look at the three cycles of year 6000, the solar cycle of Shmuel, Sheikh and Chazal, this is the only cycle. Says Chazonish, this is the only cycle that was public. And this is the cycle that matters, which is the year at its pristine form, had it not been Kitru Galavona. And the route not exist, and the cycle, we have 28, and all of the debris of 28 will be screwed in Malfa Shamayim. We destroyed it by separating the Ham and the Levona. There is a human attempt to create the sun and the moon together by giving back to the sun seven days. Which is the creation of Shabbos, which is the creation of number seven, which is Malfus Shomayim, not self-evident, but manufactured by us. That's the solar cycle of Ravada. You know why solar cycle of Ravada could never be published? Because if it was publicized, Avoy the Zora would have a place in this world. Because you realize that after Ravada, we are acknowledging that there is 11 days, the Koyach Haram, that we cannot touch it. And that's the Koyach of Kishuf. Though Koyach of witchcraft is using those 11, Chazal say, why is called Kishuf? Shemachishim Pamari Shemal. Kishuf is the power of witchcraft that can contradict Malchus Shomayim. Because as much as we do, we can't stop that. And that's the solar cycle of Abada. The astronomical solar cycle is the world without anything. The world that believes that on its own, that the sun was demoted. So the sun was demoted by creating the astronomical solar cycle. Chazal saw that we, with our own cognition, can create a larger cycle, which is the Tkufa de Ravada. That's why Tkufa de Ravada is our calendar. It's the calendar that dictates our avoid of Elam Hazar. It was never publicized because you realize that Tkufa de Ravada is all an intermediate step to arrive to Tkufa de Shmuel. So I think that's very important for us to remember something. When we see Birka Sahama, we're going to realize that the astronomical reality does not fit what you're trying to achieve. It's a constructed reality. We have to believe and understand that what we are hoping Birka Sahama is always the my separation, that the world should go to its pristine point in time where the sun and the moon cognated each other that the moon recognizes it, it comes from the sun, it has no independent existence. The Mechabli and the Neustin are separate and they connect by one means battle to the other. And that's our way to solve them. We have to realize that when we have Shona Melberes, which is the Tikkun of 12, by the way, in Chazal, if you realize the 12 years which are Pshutas, and how many years we add the concept of Yibur. We add the seven years. 
And how many do we have in the months of the seven years? We have 13 months. And you know what month we have to? The month of Adar. Because Adar is a Amalek. Amalek is the one that not only negates Malfur Shammai and wants to eradicate Malfur Shammai. Our ability to win and to fight over him is the creation of the seventh month in the cycle of 19 to bring Malfur Shammai back is our actions. And our Makosha, the day that we come here, is that the cycle of 20 years should come back. And it's Gali Malfur Shammai. And you should know that our Kavon, the Wisdom of the is the Dehei Shmei Rabu Mevorach, Leolam Leolam Leomaya, that the cycle of 20 years should become self evident and we should experience it in the Korbi Menu. Have a time. Yeah. 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 Yeah.